The king has spoken, and he addressed gold. And we know he's talking about silver, too, because silver is gold's little cousin. But what did the king himself say about gold, and will you agree with it? It was not all positive, guys. I'll give you a little hint. The king also spoke about recession and what we have to look forward to down the road. Who's the king, you may ask? It's the Bond king himself. I happen to really like the guy, always have. Jeffrey Gunlock from Double Line Capital. I've got an article here from Kitco that talks about his most recent webcast and what he said specifically about gold, which you'll be interested to hear. Most importantly, do we agree with him? And what does his recession marks mean for the future of the gold price and the silver price? You don't always have to agree with me. That's why it's called YouTube. Heck, just ask my wife Susie. Every once in a great while, she actually disagrees with me as well. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Most importantly, I want you to come back to Ron's Basement. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That is free. And give the video a thumbs up. Now let's hear from Jeffrey Gunlock, the Bond King. He's the head of Double Line Capital. He's a billionaire. And he doubled down on his recession call and said he still liked gold as real money, right? We know that. We know that whole story. Gold and silver are real money. Everything else is just basically electronic make-believe unicorn fart dust, for that matter. Despite the fact that precious metals are having trouble staying above $2,000 an ounce. Looking at the U.S. economic leading indicators as measured by the conference board, the outlook seems absolutely full-on recessionary. And we've talked about that. Whether we're, we're hearing from the CEOs of Costco or Home Depot or looking at the trucking business. Guys, the trucking business is like in a full-out recession. I don't want to say depression, but if you talk to truckers about the rates they're getting paid and the number of loads that are are available. That's a big key indicator and it has fallen off a cliff. The momentum of le leading indicators has not improved, Gunlock said, on Tuesday. It's pretty clear that we have the look of soon to be at the front end of a recession. Gunlock noted that 30% of his portfolio is in stock, 60% in bonds, and 10% in real assets. The real asset I like, he said, guess, just guess. What do you think he likes? Gold, which has gone up this year, but has a very hard time staying above $2,000. He says, I like gold because it's real money. <laughs> yeah. But I don't like commodities. I haven't liked them for a year just because the economy is weakening and we're probably heading into a recession, blah, blah, blah. However, Gunlock is, this is the part you may not want to hear, so close your ears, less bullish on gold compared to earlier this year because it hit a triple top. Gold, right? We know. We've been living it, feeling it for the last couple of months. Has tried several times to break out above that $2,000 range. And it's like, it's like that old Peanuts cartoon, right? When Lucy has the football and she's holding it for Charlie Brown to come kick it. And right as he gets there to kick it, she pulls the football away. We know exactly what Jeffrey's talking about, and that's why he's saying he's not quite as bullish on gold. He says, and now we're back down to 1965 per ounce. It seems like gold has been consolidating, like we know. It has certainly done well over the past year, going from 1600 up to nearly 2000. I'm less bullish on gold because of this triple top concept, but I still own it. Then he talks about sticky inflation and kind of rips on the Fed, our old friend Jerome Powell. Remember, those were the guys that told us that inflation was not a problem, and then it was temporary, and then it was transitory, and now it's the end of the world. Uh, he talks about the Fed raising rates too late and says that's why inflation rose as much as it did and is sticky. 
I like that word, sticky, should have raised rates by 200 basis points when they started. They unleashed this conundrum. If it raised rates sooner and faster, we might not have had all these failures in the banking system. And let's talk about that for a second, right? We had three of the four largest banks in the history of the United States go belly up just a few months ago. You know, I was making popcorn for my kids last night, and I thought of something that totally related to what was going on. You know, you get your big pot, you pour some oil into it, and then you pour all the popcorn in there. Then you turn up the heat. And to me, the heat is the interest rates right now. They're going up and up and up. And the corn, the kernels, those are the banks. You know, three of the kernels pop because the interest rates went up and put pressure on those banks, right? And if the heat keeps going up, more of those kernels are going to pop. More of those banks are going to fail. He talks about the budget deficit. He said it must be addressed in the next few years, and it will likely become a political issue in the next presidential campaign. He says fiscal responses to recessions have gotten out of control. Yeah, we know that, right? Print, 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 print. Paper over all the problems. Gunlock pointed out, it's fine to run a deficit when rates are non-existent, but now we have a budget deficit increasing and a Fed raising rates for a while. With interest rates going up this much, it will swallow tax receipts in the next few years if we stay on this track. What he's basically saying is mathematically, right, the condition that we're in here in the United States, it's not sustainable. It doesn't add up right? Uh, you can look at any type of example. If you're running your household this way, you're overwhelmed by debt. And it's going to spell trouble for the U.S. and the U.S. economy. We know how they'll respond. They'll respond with easing up on monetary policy. Our old friend, right? We know that Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve. And they'll print more money. So do you agree with Gunlock? Do you think gold's a good investment? but maybe concerned on the short term? Or do you think we just have blue skies ahead? I think we're somewhere in the middle. Sure, we could see gold drop back down maybe 1900 1850 per ounce, but I don't see a full-on bear market in the gold price anytime soon. Mathematically, it almost seems darn near impossible. But remember what I told you earlier. I'm often wrong. You can confirm that with my wife, Susie, but I am right about one thing. I want you to come back to the basement. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Go watch a live stream.